If it hadn't been for All Suit Day, people wouldn't know anything about what logging was like in the old days. It was something needed to preserve the logging as it was. As far trees, I haven't seen one for years. Most of them got those steel spars now. They didn't move them around and rig them up in a couple hours and they're going. Where I used to rig up a big fir tree and that, it'd take them two or three days to rig them up. And then they'd pick a big tree, you know, and a good clean one and the tallest one they could get. Some of them used to have them up at 200 feet high. It was something not too many people done. Once you got so you could do it, then you were more or less, uh, in those days, you were guaranteed of a job, too. So you have a problem climbing those trees because of the heavy bark on them. Uh, it's not like the ones that all suit they were all peeled and you don't do as much slipping. A lot of people just couldn't stand the height. That was the more reason a lot of them didn't do it. Like every time you topped a tree, it would, you know, it would bounce you around different. Then you always had the best view. You did a lot of sliding coming down, like especially on those big trees when they heavy bark. If you went fast, you'd have a whole boot full of bark, and the next thing you'd be sliding down on your chin. Hoo-ha! There are so few climbers around because the sport itself is not done on a regular day-to-day -day basis out in the woods anymore. See at the bottom of Wade Stewart's tree, they're checking the disc that he actually cut at the top. We've determined that it was cut enough to qualify him to move into the gold medal round. He's got to prove his point to show that he can be the best. Wade Stewart is through. There will be no bronze for the man in the yellow shirt this year. Guy German will be up in this next match, still going strong at age 49. Yes, he has a pregame ritual, most of these climbers do, and part of Guy German's involves measuring the tether that holds the saw. Yeah, and it has to be six feet long. A few calisthenics to limber up. Concentration on that face. And making sure the equipment is all tied on properly. Especially the gaffs. I was in traditional gaffs for more than three quarters of my life. The toe gaffs came into play about uh, 12 years ago. I was really against them to start with because I felt that the regular gaffs were traditional and this is a total traditional sport. So my main reason for switching was I didn't want to lose because of the equipment anymore. My knee is really only about 75%. It's the one, the one thing that holds me back a lot, but it's the training portion that is really hard on it. I wished I had switched. I really had. I wish I hadn't been so stubborn. It would have saved my knee a lot. Lot. Ed Mooch Smith will be the man that Guy German is going up against. A fourth generation logger has held world records in different events. <laughs> I've been climbing trees for years, Art, and uh, feel like I've got bark growing on me. Expeditors ready. That rope has a steel core to withstand the stray blows of an axe. So he ties it tautly to his safety belt. His long shank climbing spurs are his only means of reaching the topping point. The interesting fact to note here, Ed Smith and the red... Those spurs must penetrate the bark to solid wood. Shirt ...said that the toe gaffs cross the line. He's wearing them this year, he knows he's got to be quicker up that pole. Steps up and a flip of the rope. That's high climbing. One of the last of the traditionalists, Ed Mooch Smith. Tree topping is a job that calls for rugged men with skill and agility. Now, half now about 40 feet from the top. He braces himself and chops a timber falling notch. Here's a swing around the tree for a back cut. Now the saw penetrates deeply into the back cut. The treetop pulls away. It's falling. And Ed Smith powers through. He will advance. Guy German is finishing up just a few seconds behind. Guy was clearly to the top first, but remember, it's not just climbing or soaring. There's stuff in between. Right here, getting yourself in position to be able to do the job right. Now, half an hour, 
Let me tell you what I seen a couple years ago Brian Hurley and Carl Bischoff driving down the road On the way to the loggers field to do some training If you listen close enough you could hear them sing I'm going springboard chopping There's nothing else that I want to do Then do some old time logging Later, I couldn't believe my eyes. Dick Hurling and Ron Hartel just drove by. Their truck was full of axes and the windows were rolled down. You could hear them singing on the way to the loggers' ground. I'm going springboard chopping. There's nothing else that I want to do. Then do some old time logging like the old head ballers used to do. Seconds passed and I saw some different plates Full of stars and stripes, yeah, they were from the States It was Melvin, Lance, and Rollins sent to join the other men They were busy talking and this is what they said I'm going springboard chopping There's nothing else that I want to do Then do some old time logging Like the old head ballers used to do Springboard chopping. There's nothing else that I want to do than do some old time logging like the old head ballers used to do. Let's go springboard chopping. There's nothing else that I want to do than do some old time logging like the old head ballers used to do. You can see why he's called the king of the high riggers.